now is it okay i hope everybody can yeah pratyush dhananjay uh, i have figured out now the sound must be clear so uh, we'll be starting from where we had left we'll be uh, talking about the relationship between india and bangladesh and we had started with the chronology of events that took place during that time and we had looked at a period from 1947 to 1974 and we had seen that there were some events happening in bangladesh since the separation of india and pakistan east pakistan was not very willing to stay with west pakistan yeah good morning amit good morning everyone views so we'll be continuing from there we talked about how awami league was established and it was from the very beginning campaigning for autonomy of east bengal and some of the circumstances which led to creation of bangladesh as a new country good morning asu so the topic that we had to see now good morning everyone good morning get ready we'll be starting with the lecture so we were supposed to talk about the decade of assassinations and military coups so i'll be starting from there only the decade of assassinations and military coups and this is a decade which hap which happens from 1975 to 1985 and what the history has seen is one of the bloodiest events that happened in our neighborhood good good morning everyone suman get ready with your pen and notebook and focus on the things that we are discussing so that we can cover up all the major events that happened between india and bangladesh so this decade this decade is a decade of assassinations and military coups so why we are calling this decade as such the reason being as we had discussed that after the ravaging floods of 1974 the political conditions in the country were not good the people started protesting even though the government of the day under sheikh mujib tried a lot to contain the situation even india tried to help but the people were not happy because they had lost their loved ones they had losses in uh, agriculture they had losses in uh, trade so the conditions were getting bitter for the government here in 1975 sheikh mujib became the president in 1975 sheikh mujib became the president of bangladesh and soon he was assassinated he was assassinated or killed okay so this event this is the event when the president of our neighbor was killed and there is started some of the skirmishes between the political circuits of bangladesh and there were murmurs 
yeah ravi this is the first uh, thing that we are discussing today we have started with the class now only so when he was assassinated bangladesh was not happy there were talks in the political circuits of bangladesh that india did not give enough inputs else they could have saved sheikh mujib and after his assassination military coup took place and martial law was imposed and martial law was imposed the military of bangladesh took control of the things good morning mani so the military took control and as the trade unions were also not favor of the rule by martial law what they did they banned the trade unions but with neighbors like india and international pressure the military was not able to sustain this thing for doing this thing they wanted some support from the external world as well but most of the countries of the world denied any recognition to this military government and they were under intense pressure to bring back the democratic set setup that was in bangladesh right so what happened they did not bring a real government what they do they declare that general jiaur rahman will become the president here what happens general jiaur rahman declares himself as president and that until this point in time bangladesh was trying to give an impression that it is a secular country but looking at the sentiments of the people jiaur rahman tried to appease the population and what he did he adopted islam in the constitution so basically what he did he declared that bangladesh is a islamic country but even doing such things he was not in a position to garner the complete support of the population of bangladesh neither rest of the world was ready to recognize it as a state which can take care of its population so there was tremendous pressure from all the sides to ensure that democracy is again established in bangladesh so the turn of events led to a situation where elections were declared in 1979 till this period india was trying to coordinate and cooperate with the people who were willing to establish democracy in bangladesh so martial law is lifted in 1979 the events that took place the martial law is lifted the elections happened and jia party jia's party won okay so again there was a question whether this subham 
the topic is started from this only this is when we started indo bangladesh before this part we had studied yesterday only so we have started from here only the decade of assassination assassination and military coups this was the thing that we started with and if you have missed uh, the last lecture you need to go through the videos again so that you can see what we had discussed in the last lecture things like this happened but there were still not support of all the groups all the group of people were not happy in bangladesh so things started getting out of control and again this leader jia is assassinated in 1981 so you can see why we call this period as era of assassinations in 1981 in 1981 again bangladesh was plunged into uncertainty again the thing happened that has happened in the past and again the confusion started jia was assassinated in an attempt of military coup so this period was a period of disturbance for bangladesh it was in its nascent stage us samay bas bani raha tha bangladesh as a formation that we see today wasn't complete and it did not happen till 2008 that we'll see right and he was succeeded by jia was succeeded by succeeded by abdus sattar so he was the man who came to the picture okay this was the new man who came to picture and he is not very important and when abdus sattar came to power again a military coup happened again a military coup happened okay and this time general irshad assumes power so you can see ki this is the period and it happened in 1982 general irshad took the power so this is a period these 10 years were not stable everything was going wrong in bangladesh in 1983 irshad declares him himself as president and very limited very limited political activities were allowed most of the power was assumed by the army or political jitne bhi leaders the they were not allowed to do anything okay now this was a period of disturbance so note it down this was a period when the political parties were destroyed the supporters of the political parties were destroyed and anybody going against the army was seen as an army enemy of bangladesh they were declared as enemy and they were either imprisoned or killed so the military was reigning terror in a sense but as they wanted to show to the world that things are going well so they always declared some of the military general as president of the country and he tried to establish relationship with the rest of world but these things didn't work and in 1986 again the democracy was restored so this 
period, the next phase that we are going to discuss is restoration of democracy. All the efforts were made to ensure that democracy again prevails in Bangladesh. So these, the period of five years from 1986 to 1990 ensured that somehow democracy is established in Bangladesh. Now, in 1986, in 1986, the parliament pre-elections are held. Okay, so it is the move towards democracy. Of course, we know election is the process which is the biggest symbol of democracy in any country, free and fair elections. Many of the countries, of course, uh, if you consider China, we see that uh, there is elections, but elections is no guarantee of democracy. You must have uh, read this thing in your polity. In discussions of uh, po Indian polity, you must have uh, read about this thing, that elections doesn't always mean that it will lead to democracy. Okay, we have many examples in China and some of the dictator states which uh, show to the world that they are having elections, but ultimately the power is assigned by single party or a single dictator. Okay, so in 1986 there were elections and this military general anyhow managed to get elected. No fair elections actually. Irsad was elected for five years. So he anyhow manages, he rigs the elections and manages to become the president of the country with the process of election. Now he tries to show to the world that I am a legitimate elected ruler of the state. I did not belong to the uh, reign that had been before, actually the people of Bangladesh wanted him to get elected. He showed this thing to the world, but it was not true. It wasn't true. So, he also to appease people, earlier the military had managed to include Islam in the constitution. Okay, so it was a step forward to establishing Islam, uh, Bangladesh as an Islamic state. In 1988, he declared Islam as the state religion. In 1988, Islam becomes the state religion of Bangladesh. And this was the period when it's, most of the people were demanding for a democratic setup, a natural democratic setup, an organic democratic setup, where the ruler is elected by the people, not by coercion, by their choice. So when he declared Islam as the religion of his state, what he did, he started targeting the secular forces. He started targeting the secular forces and from that point onwards, fundamentalist Islamic groups started acting against the secular forces. And at that point in time, people like him supported them as well. But as some of the events were going against the population, and due to such attacks on people with secular credentials, there was a condition like civil war, not exactly, but things started getting ugly. And almost 10 lakh people fled Bangladesh at that point in time. 
so again the international community started in interrupting the things whatever was happening in bangladesh and due to such pressure massive protests were organized all all over bangladesh and in 1990 irsad had to step down in 1990 irsad stepped down from his position because the people of it started because mass protests were organized okay so there was no popular support for him okay asu you are not getting my voice properly you need to check uh, your setup first i think the things are okay here rest of the people is everybody finding it difficult to hear me i think there is some problem with uh, your device asu just check one more time so due to this massive pro pro uh money in democratic country as well uh, many of the democracies can uh, a state religion is all together a different thing democracy doesn't mean that somebody has to have secular okay great everybody can listen to me uh most of the people can uh, listen properly so maybe uh, anybody some of you who are having difficulty in getting the voice need to check your system okay uh mani had a question that how uh, is a religion can be a state religion in a democracy so democracy means for the people by the people of the people it means that people will elect the government religion has nothing to do with democracy some of the democracies can be can adopt uh, religion as their state uh, religion okay democracy simply means that people are electing the representative now in 1991 irsad was convicted of doing wrong things and he was punished for that as well in 1991 irsad was jailed so here comes a point where a military ruler is jailed okay so he was jailed and begum khalida jia was elected as the prime minister yeah money secularism doesn't mean democracy they two are different things and it must have been explained to you in your political classes i guess in indian polity it must have been differentiated you need to revisit the topic and understand okay, how democracy is different how elections are always not representing a democracy what is secularism right you need to revisit the topics revision is important go for revisions probably you have forgot the concepts so begum khalida jia was declared prime minister Okay. and this was the party which was uh, not in favor of secularism this she belonged to a party jia also had an ideology which never ever believed in secularism okay so this party came to power because his husband was assassinated the public uh, was in favor of the lady based on the emotional grounds she captured the power okay she captured the power and she started she made some changes 
the power of the president was reduced the power of president was reduced and the real power rested in prime minister so from the presidential form of government they shifted towards prime minister in 1991 asu this was the period when she was elected as the prime minister when ishad was removed so from the presidential form of government they shifted towards the prime ministerial form of government where president being becomes the ceremonial head of the state and prime minister wields the real power so the shift was there and now again the things are not good for bangladesh though they continuously were in power from 1991 to 1996 she was in power but she could not manage bangladesh well she was not in a position to manage the things well and in 1996 again the elections happened there were elections and from here the period of the devastation and punishments starts okay so we'll be looking at another era now we see that another election happens so the democracy is more or less established now the prime ministerial form of government is there it means it incorporates major views of the population and military is not in a position to stage a coup again so somehow they have established democracy in the country and from here on a period starts where devastation struck bangladesh again and again and the people who were responsible for some of the coups previously or who were responsible for assassinations were started getting punished because the new government was under the lady who is still wielding power there and she was very focused about the things what bangladesh needs to be like okay so from 1996 the heading is the period of devastations and punishments okay it is started from 1996 to 2001 the punishments continued it's still continuing some of the people are still being tried and they are still being punished but this is the period when majority of the events like this happened okay so bef just before the elections of 1996 what happens cyclone devastates bangladesh okay 1 lakh 40000 people were killed sentiments were against the ruling government okay so when the sentiments are against the ruling government of course if the election happens the chances are there that the opposition party will uh, party will win so exactly this thing happened and 
when elections were awami league came to power under sheikh hasina and she is the lady who is reason for some what good relationship with our neighbors before she came to power the relationship between india and bangladesh were not so good though we were the country who actually helped them to get independence but even when she was elected and was declared the prime minister of bangladesh she was not in a position to improve the relationship with india because the internal environment of bangladesh was not very good and she has to struggle with many things before she consolidated the power around 2008 to that we'll see but at this point in time let's see how the devastation and punishments were happening there now in 1997 she wanted to establish good relationship with everyone so what she thought ki we should also try to pacify the military so that in future they do not go against the government so as a slew of steps good steps that she felt at that point in time she released irshad she released him from prison her motto was to make sure that things will improve if he is released because there were many supporters of irshad as well in bangladesh which has who have helped him in coop so she wanted to make sure that each and every one with their grievances as well are assimilated in the democratic process but she was not aware that things will change for the worst as this was the man who was responsible for killing of one other individual who jia so protests started protests started against the government by opposition and the young leader sheikh hasina was trying to figure out how to deal with this situation and again worsts of the floods hit bangladesh hits bangladesh leading to large scale devastation okay again things went haywire for the incumbent government because there were floods and again as she was inclined towards india india tried to help but the environment there the opposition which was always against india and the floods made sure that the sentiments was against sheikh hasina and india because the bangladeshi people claimed that india is the reason behind ba these floods because they leave water from the farakka barrage parts of bangladesh gets destroyed and there was complete negative sentiments okay so the government did not understand what to do as 
Sheikh Hasina's father, Sheikh Mujib, was revered in Bangladesh. So what she tried to do, she meted some of the people with punishment. What she did? To get the things in her favor. The, peop the people responsible for killing Sheikh Mujib were punished. 15, 20 people were hanged. The process started from here. Now, when these people were punished, Sheikh Hasina was very, very much aware that these people belong to the military and there can be a dangerous situation when military will again try to stage a coup. So what she did? Along with this, punishing them, see, Hasina criticized military coups in UN assembly. She wanted to highlight to the world that again the military can try to take power from them, the democracy. Okay? So she had a wheeled attack. She talked about military coups in UN assembly in 2000. This happened in 2000. And she was targeting the people who are there in Bangladesh. But what happened? Because of this thing, General Musarraf, who was in power in Pakistan, reacted sharply against Hasina. Okay? And they declared that they'll not have any relationship with Bangladesh. Because she attacked all the military regimes. So wherever in the world the military coups were being staged, all those countries condemned Sheikh Hasina and they tried to distance themselves from Bangladesh. But this was the time when India was happy. India came near to Bangladesh. The relationships started being good. And General Musarraf, when reacted sharply, the diplomats were expelled. The Bangladeshi diplomats were expelled from Pakistan. And the Pakistani diplomats were also ex uh, expelled from Bangladesh. So this turn of events, Abhi hum bolte hai na, dusman ka, dusman ka hai, dost ho jata hai. So the relationship was not very good at this point in time. Sheikh Hasina was trying to create some rapport with the Indian government. Lekin isse mein kya hua? India khus ho gaya. Ki aisi situation ho gai hai. To India aur Bangladesh abhi kya hai? Achche dost ho jayenge. Lekin kya hai? This was not a very good thing for Bangladesh. Bomb attacks started in Bangladesh. After this, and whenever such thing happens, you definitely know whenever such terrorist activities happen, the opposition gets a weapon. The opposition started crying that the incumbent government is not in a position to save the people of Bangladesh. She is creating rift with some of the countries like Pakistan and because of that thing terrorist activities are happening in Bangladesh. 
and that attack was specifically some of the attacks were especially specifically targeting the areas where indian population is also living so indians were also losing their lives okay so this was the time when i like i said the punishments were also big met to the military who had coup in the yester years to cheeze bahut zyada kharab ho gayi hain but things changed and hasina anyhow managed to complete the period of 5 years she was prime minister for 5 years but she had lost considerable faith amongst the people she was not in a position to win the elections on her own though she was daughter of sheikh mujib the founder of bangladesh but she could not win the elections and there is starts an era in bangladesh that we call as the period of the caretaker and coalition governments we have seen that uh, india also relied on coalition governments after some of the disturbances after rajiv gandhi was killed we also had coalition government because at after certain point in time a single party may not be in a position to convince a whole of the population that they are the one but people have some of the times faith more faith on some of the regional parties so some of the big parties take support from these smaller parties and try to form a government which can shape the future of country so that they can govern the country well so this is a period from 2001 to 2006 and of course we know that uh, whenever such thing happen coalition government the major party may not be in a position to clearly indicate what their foreign policy is if they are favoring some country or not because the smaller parties have some definite ideology they have to appease those ideologies as well so this was a period whoever came in power was not very much inclined towards india the reason being because the floods were seen as being caused by india so there was a strong sentiment amongst the people of bangladesh that any government which is forming the government should make sure that they tell india that they should not leave the water suddenly which causes floods in bangladesh okay so this was a period from 2001 to 2006 and in 2001 khalida zia becomes prime minister but she could not win on her own this was a coalition government she took support of three coalition partners because the sentiments were not in favor of sheikh hasina so she wrested the power became the prime minister because she was she was the leader of the biggest party biggest opposition party but she had to take help from three other parties and as we know that this lady as i had already said that she was not in favor of good relations with india so automatically the leader when chosen it gives a signal directly that now the things will not be in favor of india but still india tried india declared that the welcome the elections we are welcoming the democratic process and we are ready to establish good relations with bangladesh and this party was always uh, sympathetic towards our enemy pakistan 
So the moment she was elected, General Musarraf visited Bangladesh. And he said that they are really not happy about whatever things happened in 1971. And he regretted whatever happened in 1971. Actually, General Musarraf wanted to pressurize India. So he wanted good relations with other neighbors so that they can pressurize India. Okay, so this year only, General Musarraf visited Bangladesh and regretted over things that happened in 1971 so it was his master stroke india was already under pressure after kargil war the agra summit and all things were not really good in 2001 they talked about good things with bangladesh he went back and there then we had kargil war so this visit made sure that bangladesh did not support india in the international forum when the Kargil Hill and some of the mountainous region were being captured by the Pakistani soldiers. They tried to capture some of the part that is that belongs to India. Okay, so he did this thing. Now, some of the things, this period was there when the position Bangladesh was again here, Bangladesh was differing away from India. But in the meanwhile, Sheikh Hasina was doing her groundwork. She was gaining again popularity among the masses. So there was a bomb attack on her. Okay, in 2006, And the ruling government was accused for this. There was a pop popular public perception that the government did not give enough protection to the popular leader. And so she was about to be killed. And because of this thing, violent protests erupted everywhere. The supporters of Sheikh Hasina became violent. And there was a situation there was a situation when election was to be held, but it was so massive protest. The election was to happen within one month only, but because of this reaction, because of this reaction, the caretaker government has to take over. The caretaker government took control.
and zia was not having good report among the masses so the caretaker government was shifted under the president fakruddin ahmed okay so fakruddin ahmed declared emergency now they definitely knew that if the elections are happening now then they will lose the elections and because of this thing they declared emergency that attack happened people are protesting so that they can create a situation where they can work amongst the masses and create a scenario where they can come back to power but this thing did not happen this thing did not happen now if we look at some of the events after that in those two years three years when the caretaker government was in power sorry uh, the previous government was in power they are giving support of some of the fundamentalist groups as well they coordinated with them and made sure that sheikh hasina does not hold command over the masses these groups terrorize the people not to support sheikh hasina so after the declaration of emergency the disturbances is still prevails the disturbances is still prevails but there is good relationship with india the era of good relationship with india started after sheikh hasina again came to power okay the disturbances and good relationship with india okay so after this period the disturbances are still there in bangladesh there are people who are not happy with its closeness with india there are disturbances between the two countries some of the smaller skirmishes over water sharing over immigrants and many of the issues but more or less from this period bangladesh had a clear message to the world unlike myanmar which did not give ever clear signals whether they are with india or not okay but bangladesh had a declared policy that they are with india uh, sibangi caretaker government is a government which is not uh, which is working beyond the period for which people had given power like uh, like we know that any government which is elected in india is having power for 5 years only let's say some of the extraordinary situations create a scenario when elections cannot happen then the same government can run the country without having mandate without even elections the period can be extended it will be called as caretaker government or the people in the parliament can choose someone else making a consensus that each and every party will cooperate the government until and unless the democratic process of elections can be done okay such extraordinary situations have seen caretaker government in britain when india was getting independence around 1946 uh, there was caretaker government in britain when uh, kargil war was happening there was uh, caretaker government in uh, india so similar fashion at this point in time just before the elections of uh, bangladesh as they have declared emergency so it was extraordinary situation in bangladesh so definitely that government whichever ran the uh, day to day things of uh, bangladesh were called as caretaker government because the five years period was over i hope it is clear so you uh, need to revise the uh, polity as well i think that you have 
left Indian polity for a very long period of time and you are missing some of the things which are important from the perspective of UPSC exams. These are very important term, terms. And I'm very sure that you have read polity in polity. So let's revise it in polity. Too. Now this period when emergency was declared, now again this some of the players who were in power with the help of the military, what they did, the administration, what they did in 2007, in 2007, they started targeting both the parties. They started targeting both the parties. What they did first, they charged Sheikh Hasina with someone's murder. So the period of conspiracies began for a very brief period of time. It did not disturb for a very long period of time, but a very brief period. So in 2007, Sheikh Hasina was charged with murder and Khalida Jia was put under house arrest. So during the state of emergency, some other players jumped in and they tried to make sure that both the prime ministers, the previous prime ministers are not allowed to move freely. Okay. So Sheikh Hasina was charged with murder. She was arrested and Khalida Jia was put under house arrest. Now the situations started turning again. But one thing was very clear, these leaders were popular leaders and this was not the time when the world community was going to be silent about it. So the first reaction to this was violent protests. Erupted. And world started demanding the restoration of democracy in Bangladesh. So it was not very easy for anyone to now usurp the power in such a way because Bangladesh was participative in United Nation. Bangladesh was having uh, had trade relations with most of the countries of the world. So now it was not easy for anyone to do such things, but still things did not improve at that point in time, but on medical grounds and some other grounds, Sheikh Hasina went to West, okay, for medical treatment and she garnered, garnered world support against the things, whatever was happening in Bangladesh. So the people who were doing such things were towed down and they were forced to conduct elections again. So elections happened in 2008 and Awami League came back with a thumping win. 2008 elections. And this is the period after which Sheikh Hasina was in a position to consolidate herself, consolidate her clout over the 
politics of Bangladesh. She made sure that she is doing everything possible in her capacity to provide opportunities to the people of Bangladesh. She went for each and everything which could bring employment opportunities to Bangladeshi people. She went for deals which brought investment in Bangladesh. And people were more or less happy with whatever she was doing. But still, not everything was, was fine in Bangladesh. The relations with India improved a lot. But few things that kept happening, even after. Okay? Few of the things that kept happening and disturbed the scenario were Islamist organizations started consolidating their foothold in Bangladesh. Most of the things improved, but few of the things went wrong in Bangladesh. Their own people were killed by fundamentalist Islamist groups. And what they do? These fundamentalists start killing pro-secular proponents whoever talked about secular credentials yeah Mani, she is a very uh, well-read lady she is very intelligent she had most of her education in west okay she went to USA for her uh, earlier studies, so you were lucky to listen to such an uh, intellectual individual. That's great. The Sia population was also targeted. It was not like uh, they were against some of uh, the Hindu individuals residing there or Buddhist individuals residing there. These militant groups started attacking Sia population as well. They are still doing this thing. These militant groups attacked Sia population, Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, all the minority groups were targeted. Okay? So these people did not feel safe. Uh, hot pursuits and surgical strike. Surgical strike is sudden strike. Okay? It is like a sudden strike on people. Hot pursuit is somebody is running away. Okay? We know that some of the activities were done in our territory and they are now moving inside and running away from us. Then we chase them and then we strike them. That is hot pursuit. And surgical strike doesn't necessarily mean that we are chasing someone. We know that there are some people there, militant organization there, their training camps are there, and we'll attack that. This is the difference between the two. Okay, so these things started happening, and this these things are still happening. It is not like... Uh, This such things are continuously happening now as well. But overall, overall, 
Bangladesh has clear policy of friendship with India since 2008. It is a country which has always supported India in most of the international forums. It has always tried to establish good relationship with India since Sheikh Hasina came to power. So uh, the reign of Sheikh Hasina is important to us and we'll be looking at uh, the things, some of the important things as well in uh, contemporary things that has happened between these two countries. So this is the story that you need to know. This is the background. In such background, definitely if someone asks you how the relationship has been between India and Bangladesh, you can tell easily that this relationship was based on, uh, this was a kind of on and off relationship till 2008. And you can write some of the instances that we have discussed. And major uh, developmental relationship, major cooperation has happened after 2008. Okay, so we'll be looking at those things as well. So note it down and uh, now we'll be moving towards a very important aspect. Though we have to look at uh, the overall aspect of relationship with India and Bangladesh, but the most probable question that can appear in exam is relationship with Bangladesh with respect to Northeast India. So before looking at a comprehensive uh, relationship, uh, what today I'm going to do is, first thing I'll be doing, we'll be looking at this relationship from the perspective of Northeast, so that whenever you are writing the exam, you'll be clear with this thing. And you can write some good answers. So we'll be looking at why Bangladesh is important to India India's Northeast. This is a question that you need to know. This can appear in the exam. Okay. So why Bangladesh is important to India's Northeast? We'll be looking at this first and then we'll look at the overall relationship. If we look at the relationship between India and Bangladesh, this is the most important perspective. So I'm doing it separately. With neighbors, it is very, very important for us to understand the aspects in a little detail. Rest of the things, we can go fast. But with some of these neighbors, we'll take our time and we'll make sure that you understand each and every aspect which is important from the perspective of exams. Okay, so demography, the question of demography is important. Introduction, agar ye directly question aata hai maan lije, to introduction kya lik sakte hai is question mein? Ki Bangladesh is a neighbor which touches many of the states from northeast and so it touches almost all the dimensions of relationship that can be established between two nations. As a introduction, a simple hum lik sakte hain. Aur kin kin aspects pe hum baat kar sakte hain. Agar mein aspects ki baat karta hun, to sab se pehle kya hai? The demographic change.
demography and migration this is the most important aspect demography or migration the demography of some of the states of india is changing the legal immigrants who came to india before 1971 they established in some of the places and there was slight change in demography and india had welcomed this thing we were never averse to these migrations okay because they came to india they worked in india settled in india before 1971 and they did everything like any other individual you and me are doing in india okay but some of the people after 1971 there was exodus who were not recognized they were illegal immigrants they came to india without the permission of this country they settled here they built families they started uh increase their population and they are taking control over some of the resources that belong to the people who are the residents and citizens of this country so this is one of the biggest problems it is also a disputed area between these two countries though bangladesh itself has written in its census that there are almost 1 crore people missing from bangladesh but they do not recognize that they went to india they say that they might have went somewhere else but their own census has once mentioned that they have missed they have lost and they have no record of 1 crore people where they moved and india is the only country in the neighborhood which is very very advantageous for the people of bangladesh economically with respect to the resources so of course we know that if they have accepted this thing that almost 1 crore people are missing from bangladesh it is very very clear that almost 80 to 90% of the people migrated to our country and this has changed the demography of some of the states be it uh, tripura be it uh, west bengal assam and some other northeastern states are also complaining and protesting against giving citizenship to these countries as you know there were violent protests in arunachal pradesh as well okay so all the states were protesting against such thing so this is one of the most important aspect between this relationship and whenever you are writing an answer you will have to make sure that you are including this point the other important factor is i'll be talking about this thing in detail when we'll be discussing but i'm giving you just the heads the introduction i have given you a fair idea and i'm giving about i'm talking about this question the northeast question okay demography you can talk about you can talk about insurgency gen c as well the problem of insurgency and separatism okay we of course know that there are many insurgent groups in northeast so they take safe haven in our neighboring states so bangladesh is also one of the states where some of the training camps were there but they still exist but this incumbent government of sheikh hasina she has actually helped india in wiping some of these insurgent groups but as we discussed now only that the islamic fundamentalist organizations have started working in bangladesh so they give some kind of support to these insurgent groups they supply arms they supply money they supply drugs and these things are disturbing the peace and prosperity and development of our northeastern states so you have to talk about this thing as well but this is simply not limited to some of the negative things only right demography and migration insurgency and separation but it can also offer some of the good things to 
the northeastern states like trade and port facility we definitely know that one of the nearest ports of india from northeast that is uh, kolkata it's almost more than 1000 kilometers away from many of the states of northeast okay but if we talk about chitgong port it is nearby many of the states of northeast it is under the range of 200 to 300 kilometers only so from the perspective of trade and port facility bangladesh can actually help export some of the items that are being prepared in northeast and it will become very very easy for us right so you can talk about trade and port facility you can uh, just remember that you can talk about chitgong port in the range of 200 to 300 kilometers from northeast so this facility can be a game changer right trade and port port facility it can bring a good amount of money to the northeastern regions and development can take place they are important because india wants that this should not happen this is an important aspect the negative things can also be important right we want to remove that so bangladesh can help us if it wants we, the northeastern states will give inputs india will give, give input and bangladesh can destroy these insurgent groups it can deny them arms so it is important it can help us reduce the insurgency and separatism in our northeastern state right so it is important now the th fourth point that you of course can talk about connectivity we have talked about connectivity and people's movement if somebody there are many states which are far from let's say rest of india assam we definitely have easy access but if you talk about tripura these people have to go to guwahati and then they come to this part of india so if uh, we can create rail routes we can create roads then what will happen they can easily visit kolkata via bangladesh and it will be it will take less time and they'll be investing less amount of money as well so it will become very very easy for the northeastern people to get assimilated with rest of the country if we have good relations with bangladesh okay what next all of you know that bangladesh is a fertile region and our northeastern states they are mountainous so definitely the food crops that are grown there are not sufficient as the population of northeastern states is also rapidly is increasing barring few of the states which have actually control their population but most of the states with the facilities that are available today have been increasing their numbers and this brings a problem to that region as well and that is the food scarcity can be a challenge in case they are cut off from rest part by some natural event or maybe aggression from china so if we can create this connectivity or the northeastern states have easy access to bangladesh then food security of the northeastern states will be very easy you can talk about this point as well this is also very very important food security 
so definitely you can talk about this point which is important and with a diagram and all like i had said this we can always talk about the risk of chicken neck so it is not only limited to food security it is limited it uh, is related to energy security rest of all the security you can talk about in risk to chicken neck okay and here you have opportunity to draw diagrams as well as uh, we have seen whenever you are doing this thing always make sure that you are drawing a diagram you are representing the area you can use simple diagrams ab ye sare point aapne banaye hain in some of the points what you can do let's say about chicken neck only you know that this is like so this is bangladesh simple diagrams you have to make right connectivity by road by railways you can show here we have you can show kolkata and this is north east india this is your chicken neck you can show here you can mark it like this and you can write chicken neck okay so always try to draw diagrams and connectivity yeah you can show like this railway connectivity makes easier we know that guwahati is somewhere here so if these people want to come it takes so much bigger route abhi kaisa hai agar kolkata se kisi ko connect hona hai agar hum train ki hi baat karte hain तो कैसे जाना पड़ता है इतना लंबा रूट है अभी ये क्या है शॉर्ट हो जाएगा इन स्टेट्स के लिए बहुत इजीली हम कर सकते हैं सम ऑफ द स्टेट्स जो डायरेक्टली नजदीक हैं, अभी ये रूट कैसे हम बना सकते हैं हम ऐसा बना सकते हैं इनर्जी भी होगा फ्यूल भी सेव होगा मनी भी सेव होगा सो वी कैन रिप्रेजेंट दिस क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस बाकी मूवमेंट ऑफ पीपल ऑफकोर्स यू कैन शो माइग्रेशन जो जो स्टेट्स में इन्फ्लुएंस है वहां यहीं पे लिख देंगे माइग्रेशन इज चेंजिंग डेमोग्राफी यहां से ही क्या है कि आप सारी चीजें एक डायग्राम पे आप हेडिंग्स जितने हैं वो शो कर सकते हैं इट विल मेक योर आंसर्स मोर इजी uh deepak uh, in uh, if you have uh, read about uh, the sequence of uh, the unions how the countries unify themselves economically these all are stages of economic unions we start with partial agreements then free trade agreements then custom union then market union then the major unions like european union where you have given some political rights to some economic rights some common governance so it can happen but it can only happen if there is no suspicion between the countries but you have seen that there is no country in neighborhood where we do not have some kind of suspicion or problematic areas in europe most of the countries were living a cordial relationship so it was easy there but uh, in places like india where there is lot of population in south asia there is lot of population there is less resource so different countries will always be fighting for these limited resources and creating a union of such uh, scale is very tough in such regions the possibility is really bleak in these regions but of course if uh, some of the states can actually come uh together and create this thing and the regional groups like sark 
this was moving forward in this direction only but you have you of course if you read the newspapers you need know that these uh, regional forums are failed groups they are uh, a groups where we fight and blame we do not cooperate much so it is a difficult thing okay i hope you are clear so this way you can uh, write a an answer and the diagram you can draw after introduction only you can draw this diagram after introduction or maybe in some of the points right so it will give you good score if you write your answers like this in headings a good diagram and some of the events that are happening in current affairs if you mention that thing with examples you'll get fantastic marks now we'll uh, move to some of the broad points that are important with respect to the relationship of these two nations so we'll start with the boundary issues related to boundary i hope everybody has noted this thing as well now we are talking about the relationship between indo bangladesh some of the issues contemporary some of the major points over which you can have a question so issues related to boundary okay it is uh, yeah ravi you can mention the china factor if you want you can of course the chicken neck point the last point that we had written it is related to china only you can relate that point with china of course you can because the major threat is china only issues related to boundary we share a boundary a very big boundary with bangladesh okay so the first issue it has been resolved in the recent years we have tried and figured out some of the things to resolve these issues very small skirmishes remain but most of it is resolved but if we look at the extent of boundary that we say it is more than 4000 kilometers the boundary is more than 4000 kilometers 4351 kilometers Four thousand kilometers of boundary, and our northeastern states, of course, have many of the states. Five states share the boundary with this, and if we talk about the first one is West Bengal. So, like I had said, always try to present things in a nice manner. it will help you in your answers as well whenever you are making your notes as well have a practice of doing this thing it will always help you you will learn how to represent in your answers as well so whenever you are uh, mentioning some fact some data make sure that you are providing that in a uh, tabular format yes ravi right the concept of chicken neck devam so probably you did not focus in the previous lectures we call this area as chicken neck right because it is a very small area that connects north eastern india with rest part of india so this is a vulnerable place why because china is very nearby it can any given day cut off this place if it uh, 
comes to some military action, right? So we call it as chicken neck. You'll be reading about this thing in detail in security issues when uh, you'll be reading security, internal security and all, then uh, you'll be reading in detail. So this boundary is 2217 kilometers. With Tripura, 856 kilometers. With Meghalaya, 443 kilometers. With Mizoram, 318 kilometers and Assam. The least boundary is with Assam. This is 262 kilometers only. So you can expect a question in prelims as well. So which state uh, shares the most lengthiest boundary or arrange them in ascending or descending order? So uh, you need to you don't need exact numbers, but of course, the sequence you must remember. Approximate, me yad rakhenge, ekdam exact yad karne ki jarurat jada nahi hai, theek hai? So when we are having this, to boundary me kya kya dikkat ho sakti hai? Issues related with boundary, agar hum kahenge, agar aapko sirf iske basis me bhi kuch likhna ho, to of course you know ki what a porous boundary like this, and this much of boundary you cannot protect. Fence laga ke kuch bhi karke bahut tough hai. Kyunki some of the areas are not easy. Some of the rivers are shifting their course. So there will be some of the skirmishes. To yaha kya ho sakta hai? Easily smuggling ho sakti hai. Boundary related issues bhi agar question mein aata hai, to aap kin kin cheejon ke baare mein lik sakte hai? Smuggling. Smuggling of what? A smuggling can be related to livestock. It can be related to drugs. It can be related to arms. Fir kya ho sakta hai? Migration. Migration ka issue, jo humne dekha hai, wo boundary close hone ki wajah se hi hai. Chik hai? And this problem, migration to itna khatarnaak ho gaya tha ki there was a time when Indian government declared that suit at sight. Koi dikhta hai wahan se aate huye illegally, usko wahin pe goli maar do. Because we were frustrated of, ya Ravi, you can add all the things. Fake currency. Baut saari chijiyon ke baare mein aap baat kar sakte hai. Thik hai, smuggling ho raha hai, fake currency, migration. Uh, trafficking in not related to drugs only, trafficking related to women, children, बहुत कुछ चीजें इसकी वजह से हो रही हैं। तो boundary issue is a big issue. This is really a big problematic thing, जो कि resolve करना काफी important था both countries के perspective से। And for this to happen. For this thing, live stock itna high kaise hai, poor countries, agriculture countries, aap agar YouTube pe video dekhenge, to wo lakdi se kya karte hai, rassi baantte hai, ek taraf kya karenge, gai ko baan denge, dousri taraf khud rahenge, latak jayenge, uske baad usko ghuma dete hai, to gai is taraf a jati hai, aur usko le lete hai, to it, wo bhoat badi dekkat hai, aap videos dekh sakte hai, there are so many funny videos, मतलब दस लोग मिलके लटक के वो ऐसा कर रहे होंगे तो लेकिन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस एरिया बेसिकली स्केर में से एरिया का था इंडिपेंडेंस के टाइम में क्या हुआ पोरस रीजन है एक्सेक्ट बाउंड्रीज नहीं कर पाए तो व्हाट कुछ लोग क्या चाहते थे कि हम इंडिया में ही रहेंगे वो वहां पे थे लेकिन दे फेल्ट लाइक इंडिया का है कुछ लोग क्या बोले कि हम यहाँ नहीं आना चाहते हैं वहां नहीं आना चाहते हैं हमारी जमीन वहां भी है तो उस समय कुछ चीजें छोड़ दी गई थी। तो वी कॉल दिस प्लेसेस आर इनक्लेव्स। दे आर स्मॉल प्लेसेस 
which are deep which were deep inside bangladesh but they were territories of who wanted to be with india so what uh, इससे कंफ्यूजन होता था बॉर्डर को चेक करना भी इमिग्रेशन एंड ऑल स्मगलिंग रोकना बहुत डिफिकल्ट हो जाता था तो क्या किया इंडिया ने 1974 में वी हैड एन एग्रीमेंट ओके 1974 एग्रीमेंट बहुत बार इसके ऊपर डिस्कशन हुआ बट 1974 इज अ मेजर टाइम इस टाइम में क्या है कि कुछ कॉन्क्रीट डिसीजन लिए थे ठीक है इसमें क्या कहा था द इनक्लेव हैव टू बी ट्रांसफर्ड पहला पॉइंट क्या था द प्लेसेस Which have become a cause of conflict क्योंकि clear boundary नहीं है क्या करेंगे वो area ही shift कर देंगे उस तरफ जो पूरे बांग्लादेश में easily visible है वो वाला part India नहीं मान के उनको दे देंगे और यहां दे देंगे दूसरा क्या point था कि the people will be given a choice in 1974 सेवेंटी फोर द गवर्नमेंट एग्रीड दैट द पीपल विल बी गिवेन अ चॉइस टू स्टे एट द सेम प्लेस और मूव बैक टू द न्यू प्लेस people will have choice to live there or shift ye aadmi ke upar depend karega the government will not force people will get the choice if they want to shift to the other country let's say some of the people are considered being in india and agar exchange of enclave mein kya ho gaya wo bangladesh mein chale gaye to bangladesh aisa nahi keh sakti hai ki wo indian log hai hum nahi lenge agar wo banda wahi rehna chahta hai if he wants to stay there then bangladesh will have to accept that but if he says that he want to shift to india then india will readily accept so it has to be given this thing but for a very long period of time from 1974 like we have seen though the agreement was in 1974 only but things did not happen right and hence there was again a meet in 2011 okay so which discuss the land related matters with bangladesh and in 2013 our parliament approved a framework to exchange these enclaves okay so there was in 2013 we allowed this thing to happen to kya hua 2013 amendment approved so you need to know about this you can write about this in references as it has been resolved it is not going to be very very important but you need to know this thing because it was one of its kind in the recent times okay so it is important to isme kya hua Hundred eleven enclaves were given to Bangladesh. India received fifty one enclaves. this agreement was passed it actually happened in 2015 ye jo aapki cheez hai ye 2015 mein finally kiya gaya tha isko theek hai now so the boundary dispute between the two countries 
is almost resolved. But still you will find some of the times it appears in the newspaper. Yeah, Ravi. Ravi. You can do this. Give me a moment. So we'll start with uh, this thing only, continue with this. And uh, the second point that we are going to uh, talk about is territorial disputes. We'll be talking about territorial disputes. Note it down fast. And uh, we do not have a diagram for this, the reason being that they are spread over so many places that we cannot draw a diagram of it. It is spread over 151 areas, 101, 111 enclaves that were given to Bangladesh. So maybe even if you want to draw a diagram in exam hall, what you can do, you can show like this and you can mark some of the points because it is everywhere. So they were exchanged. Some of the areas were exchanged. You can show some of the areas, but it is not a very... Uh, this thing. Uh, Deepak, it is not uh, said by Archer. Protius, you want to know the enclave and conclave. Deepak answer de deta hun, jo political ek, uh, ye hai. Dekhye, ye kya hai na, opposition ne kaha, India was at loss. But uh, area ke hisab se dekh rahe hain. Area ke hisab se agar hum dekhte hain, to aap aisa keh sakte hain. But, uh, Actually, वो इतना बड़ा problem था सोचिए. Both the countries के लिए कितना बड़ा. हमारे यहाँ बहुत population आ रही थी. Lot of people were coming and they were telling that relative है इसलिए आते जाते हैं. Plus, what people were dying. India had given free hand to the military at one point in time that you can kill. You can kill the people if somebody tries to cross over. ठीक है? ओके प्रत्युष इनक्लेव इस बेसिकली क्या है इनक्लेव से अगर आप देखेंगे तो इनक्लेव किसी भी चीज को बोलते हैं जो एक छोटा सा ग्रुप हो जो सराउंडिंग एरिया से डिफरेंट हो सो व्हेन इट कम्स टू दिस हम जो बात कर रहे हैं जिस रेस्पेक्ट में तो दीज आर द पीपल हु वेर कल्चरली डिस्टिंक्ट फ्रॉम द पीपल हु वेर सराउंडिंग देम बट इट ये एग्जैक्ट डेफिनेशन के टर्म्स में अगर हम बात करें ठीक है लेकिन यहाँ देखने पे क्या है वो ऐसा केस नहीं था एक्चुअली द कंफ्यूजन इज लाइक द बाउंड्री वेर लाइक दिस ऐसा ऐसा तो यहाँ क्या है कि आप इस एरिया की अगर हम बात करें तो ये इंडिया है मान लेते हैं ठीक है और यहाँ बांग्लादेश है यहाँ भी बांग्लादेश है तो ए, ए, इंडियन एरिया इज सैंडविच बिटवीन टू पार्ट ऑफ द बांग्लादेश सो इट it was difficult to manage. Boundary kya hai, lambi ho ja rahi hai na. So, this area is enclave. Real definition of enclave, maine kya bataya? Ki culturally different hona chahiye. Par is cheej mein aisa hona jaruri nahi hai. Thik hai? Ya, yeah, saksham, distinct group of cultural. But in this case, the cultural difference was not there. Thik hai? But still, boundary demarcation aisi thi ki wo Indian part tha. वो डेफिनेशन जो सक्षम ने लिखा है वो राइट है बट डेफिनेशन डजेंट फिट्स एवरीवेयर कॉन्क्लेव क्या है ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल कमिंग टूगेदर फॉर अ कॉन्फ्रेंस में भी सम मीट और हैविंग कॉमन आइडिया अभी आप सब लोग क्या है कि एक जगह मिलके इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन पढ़ेंगे ऐसा बोल के ग्रुप में जाते हैं दैट इज अ कॉन्क्लेव दैट इज अ कॉन्फ्रेंस ठीक है नाउ विल मूव टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टेरिटोरियल वॉटर्स there is always a problem between these two countries with respect to the territorial waters.
आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग दिस हेयर मेनी ऑफ द जब श्रीलंका की भी बात करेंगे तो ये वाला डिस्प्यूट आएगा ओके यू कैन नॉट सी इच अदर्स कमेंट एंड वाई इट्स हैपनिंग आई हैव नो आइडिया सो विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द टेरिटोरियल वाटर्स तो पहले ये समझना आई होप कि आपको टेरिटोरियल वाटर आपको पता होगा ज्योग्राफी आप पढ़ चुके हैं तो अगर सम ऑफ यू आर नॉट अवेयर तो आई एक्सप्लेन दिस थिंग इन दिस रिलेशनशिप ताकि आपको ये दिस थिंग इज गोइंग टू हेल्प इन मेनी अदर सब्जेक्ट एज वेल ठीक है आप इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी भी पढ़ेंगे तो ये टर्म्स आएंगे सो आई एक्सप्लेन इट वंस सो दैट यू हैव क्लियर आइडिया ऑफ वॉट एग्जैक्टली दीज टर्म्स आर तो देर इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अच्छा दिवम अभी नहीं पढ़ा आपने तो मे भी पढ़ेंगे अभी मैं शॉर्ट में बता देता हूं This is a land area. Let's say this is land. Exclusive economic zones and all. आप ये है यहां आपका सेल्फ एरिया है ये तो आपने पढ़ा होगा ज्योग्राफी में कॉन्टिनेंटल सेल्फ एंड ऑल एंड दिस इज डीप ओशियन इसके बाद हमारा चला जाता है ठीक है तो जब भी बाउंड्री जो है स्टेट की किसी भी कंट्री की इससे अगर हम ऐसा मानते हैं तो 12 नॉटिकल माइल्स तक 12 नॉटिकल माइल्स अब नॉटिकल माइल क्या होता है अगर हम नॉटिकल माइल्स की बात करें तो इट इज इक्वल टू 1.852 पॉइंट एट फाइव टू किलोमीटर ठीक है तो इतने किलोमीटर्स 1.8 किलोमीटर से ऊपर होता है ये जानना चाहिए आपको ठीक है तो इतना एरिया जो है इसे हम कहते हैं टेरिटोरियल वाटर इस पे किसी भी कंट्री का एनी ऑफ द कंट्रीज हैव कंप्लीट कंट्रोल यहां से हम रिसोर्सेज भी निकाल सकते हैं यहां से कोई भी कंट्री जो चाहे वो कर सकती है ठीक है ये चीज समझिए फिर मैं समझाऊंगा कि कैसे दिक्कतें आ रही हैं इसके बाद का जो एरिया है इसके बाद के एरिया को अनदर ट्वेल्व नॉटिकल जो माइल होता है उसे हम कॉन्टेजियस जोन कहते हैं कंटेजियस जोन दिस इज आल्सो ट्वेल्व नॉटिकल माइल ठीक है ये बना लीजिए ये हर सब्जेक्ट में ही आपको काम आएगा तो अभी मैं समझा देता हूं इसके बियॉन्ड जो है एरिया 200 नॉटिकल माइल्स ये जो जोन है इसे हम ई ई जेड कहते हैं एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन ठीक है इसके बियॉन्ड जो एरिया होता है वो इंटरनेशनल वॉटर्स हैं एनी कंट्री हैव ऑलमोस्ट मोर सम राइट टेल 200 हंड्रेड नॉटिकल माइल्स अब ये जो कॉन्टेजियस जोन होता है इसमें लिमिटेड कंट्रोल्स uh, होता है किसी भी स्टेट का टेरिटोरियल वाटर इज कंप्लीट कंट्रोल सारा कंट्रोल है जैसे पूरा इंडिया का अगर हम टेरिटोरियल वाटर की बात करें तो इस डिस्टेंस तक एवरीथिंग वॉट एवर इज इन दिस वाटर इज आवर्स वो हमारा है कोई और कंट्री उस पर कंट्रोल नहीं दिखा सकता है ऐसा वर्ल्ड की डेफिनेशन कहती है ठीक है बट ये प्रैक्टिकल कैसे नहीं हो पा रहा है इस पर हम डिस्कस करेंगे एंड दिस एरिया कॉन्टेजियस जोन में सिर्फ चार चीजें अलाउड होती हैं हम किसी चीज पे कंप्लीट टैक्सेशन ले सकते हैं कस्टम्स ड्यूटीज जो होती हैं वो इस वाटर में कोई आता है तो वी कैन आस्क फॉर हम पॉल्यूशन रिलेटेड चार्जेस ले सकते हैं एंड वी कैन 
also talk about some of the immigration issues in these waters law bana sakte hain jo yahan pe work karega to yahan sari cheez pe control nahi hai we have only control over four things taxation customs pollution and immigration ab exclusive economic zone jo hai इस पे क्या है कि हम वी कैन एक्सप्लोर एंड मैनेज रिसोर्सेज इस एरिया में क्या कर सकते हैं एक्सप्लोर एंड मैनेज रिसोर्सेज बट विल हैव टू टेक परमिशन ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल सी बैड ऑथोरिटी वो इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस में इतना इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है लेकिन आप जब भी क्या है कि रिसोर्स ज्योग्राफी पढ़ते होंगे और जब पढ़ेंगे आप अपनी ज्योग्राफी में तो इंटरनेशनल सी बेड ऑथोरिटी के बारे में बात होगी ओशियोग्राफी में ठीक है यहां हम क्या कर सकते हैं वी कैन क्रिएट आर्टिफिशियल आइलैंड्स एज वेल बट विल हैव कंट्रोल ओवर दिस ओनली इफ वी हैव परमिशन फ्रॉम द इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी इंटरनेशनल सी बेड ऑथोरिटी बोलती है कि आप कुछ चीजें कर सकते हैं तो इसमें कर सकते हैं वी आर अलाउड फॉर साइंटिफिक रिसर्च एज वेल इन एरियाज में ये सब कर सकते हैं इंटरनेशनल वॉटर्स में किसी का कोई कंट्रोल नहीं है वो सबका होता है होल वर्ल्ड हैज पावर कोई भी अपना नाव ले जाए ले आए कॉमन यूज के लिए हैं ये एरियाज तो ये कॉन्सेप्ट क्यों समझना जरूरी है क्योंकि इंडिया बांग्लादेश क्या है बगल बगल में है वी डू नॉट हैव इवन सच ए मेजर बाउंड्री जो ओशन से टच होता है बहुत सारा एरिया कैसा है इतना क्लोज है कि मतलब नाव खड़ी हो तो दोनों कंट्री में हो सकती है छोटी सी नाव भी तो बाउंड्री डिस्प्यूट टेरिटोरियल वाटर्स को लेके अफकोर्स होने वाला है नोट डाउन फास्ट सो दैट वी कैन मूव टू एटलीस्ट टेरिटोरियल वाटर आज कंप्लीट करेंगे देन विल लुक एट सम अदर एस्पेक्ट ये कॉन्सेप्ट इज इंपॉर्टेंट ये बार बार आएगा ये प्रिलिम्स में भी पूछ सकता है दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट ठीक है आई होप एवरीबडी हैज मेड दिस थिंग एंड नोटेड डाउन एज वेल नाउ विल लुक एट the makeup of india and bangladesh ab ye boundary dispute ki agar hum baat karte hain india aur bangladesh ka kya hal hai the boundaries are super close theek hai ek aur diagram main chahta hu ki aap log banaiye rough diagram hi this is like land area hai aisa dikhna chahiye ठीक है दिस इज वॉट दिस इज योर डेल्टा एरिया डेल्टा एरिया है इंडिया और बांग्लादेश की अगर हम बात कर रहे हैं ये हम मान लेते हैं कि बाउंड्री है बाउंड्री यहां क्या है कोलकाता मतलब दिस इज इंडिया और इस तरफ अपना बांग्लादेश है ठीक है द रेस्ट ऑफ द टेरिटरी यहां वाला बांग्लादेश है तो अब टेरिटोरियल वॉटर की अगर हम बात करते हैं टेरिटोरियल वॉटर अब इसमें ट्वेल्व नॉटिकल माइल्स इसके हिसाब से वर्ल्ड की डेफिनेशन के हिसाब से इस बाउंड्री के इधर ट्वेल्व नॉटिकल माइल्स इसका होना चाहिए हमारा होना चाहिए अब ये क्या है कि अच्छा रवि आपने नहीं बनाया अभी यू हैव ड्रॉन दिस थिंग चलिए मैंने नीचे कर दिया है लिख लीजिए टेरिटोरियल वाटर कॉन्टेजियस इज एड ये देख रहा है अब ये बहुत बड़ा प्रॉब्लम एरिया है अब कैसा प्रॉब्लम हो रहा है बोथ द कंट्रीज का क्लेम है अब दोनों कंट्री क्या क्लेम कर रही हैं कि ये वाला एरिया मेरा है मेरा है तो एग्जैक्ट लोकेशन का नहीं बट देर इज सम वे प्लेस है ठीक है कुछ एरियाज हैं जहां आपका बांग्लादेश और इंडिया में स्क्रमसेज हैं
अब एग्जैक्ट बाउंड्री तो खींच नहीं सकते हैं पानी में एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन के लिए कोई ये नहीं है वर्ल्ड की डेफिनेशन है उन्होंने वर्ल्ड क्या है कि बाकी सब क्या है अमेरिका जैसी कंट्रीज ये सब बनाती थी तो वो क्या है कि सबसे दूर ही है उसका ओशन दूर है तो उसने क्या है कि बना के छोड़ दिया इट वॉज माइटी कंट्री उससे कोई लड़ भी नहीं सकता है तो एक्सक्लूसिव इकोनॉमिक जोन के लिए किसी की परमिशन नहीं चाहिए लेकिन उस जोन के नीचे रिसोर्सेज को यूज करने के लिए इंटरनेशनल सी बेड ऑथोरिटी की जरूरत परमिशन की जरूरत होती है इंटरनेशनल सी बेड ऑथोरिटी रिसर्च वर्क एंड ऑल इसके बारे में आप पढ़ेंगे ज्योग्राफी या मे बी सम अदर सब्जेक्ट इंटरनेशनल सी बेड ऑथोरिटी रिसोर्सेज आप जब पढ़ेंगे तो इसका डिस्कशन होगा मेरी टाइम रिसोर्सेज तो जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस नेम इंटरनेशनल सी बेड ऑथोरिटी रिसोर्सेज का पार्ट है ठीक है अब इंडिया क्या बोल रहा है ये है बांग्लादेश चाहता है बांग्लादेश वांट्स दिस एज बाउंड्री ऑफ टेरिटोरियल वाटर्स इंडिया वांट्स दिस तो अभी प्रॉब्लम चल रही है ठीक है द टेरिटोरियल वाटर्स कैन नॉट बी डिमार्केटेड बिटवीन द टू कंट्रीज बिकॉज दे आर वेरी वेरी क्लोज यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट दे आर सो क्लोज दैट वी कैन नॉट एग्जैक्टली डिमार्केट द बाउंड्रीज सो द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ टेरिटोरियल waters is difficult to resolve on the very first day when we are discussing some of the events related to bangladesh somebody had uh, that day pointed out about new moors island right so if uh, some land area is there within 12 nautical miles then we'll have a stake our claims over that as well so there was an island that appeared suddenly ye wala sabne bana liya i hope that appeared suddenly in these waters theek hai new moors Island appeared suddenly in Bay of Bengal, and both countries claimed over it. अब अचानक सागर में एक आइलैंड आ जाए दैट प्लेस ओनली स्पेसिफिकली ये बीच वाले एरिया में जहां टेरिटोरियल वाटर्स का कॉन्सेप्ट फिट बैठता है अब अचानक लैंड एरिया आ गया लैंड इज है स्कैर्स रिसोर्स सो बोथ द कंट्रीज सेट की हमें चाहिए ये हमारा है ठीक है सो इट वॉज अ पॉइंट ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बट अभी ये क्यों इतना इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है जैसे नेचर ने इसे अचानक दिया था वैसे ही नेचर ने इसे वापस भी ले लिया ठीक है बिकॉज ऑफ सम ऑफ द इवेंट्स अंडर द ओशियन इट अपियर्ड एंड टू थाउजेंड एंड टेन सो दिस वॉज अ कॉज ऑफ कंफ्लिक्ट दो इट वॉज अ कॉन इट वॉज अ कॉज ऑफ कंफ्लिक्ट बिटवीन दीज टू कंट्रीज कंफ्लिक्ट एंड देर वेर डिमांड्स फॉर इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन एंड ऑल बट दिस बिकेम इेलिवेंट वाई बिकॉज इट डिस in 2010 and hence nature itself 
resolve this issue. But the problems related to territorial waters and contagious zone is still persists. Some of the skirmishes are still there. Okay. So note it down. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll uh, discuss some major events like illegal migration and what happened to it. Today, uh, this is the last topic that uh, we'll discuss. Note everything down. And I hope uh, you have understood. Though we have taken some more time with respect to Bangladesh, but uh, I tried to make sure that you have a complete understanding of this topic because Bangladesh, Pakistan, and China, these three are really important. Uh, it's like, uh, I think it's 1.30 only. Let me check. As far as I was informed, the lectures were up to 1.30. Okay, no, it is up to 2 p.m. Then we have uh, time. Ha ha, cheek asaksham. Thanks for reminding me. Actually, I thought that it is up to uh, 1.30 only. So it is up to this. So we'll be uh, just noted down. This, uh, it disappeared in 2010 and hence nature itself resolved the issue. Theek hai? Yati will be continuing for half an hour more because uh, Saksham reminded me that it's up to 2 p.m. As, uh, and I uh, checked it now only. So we'll continue with this. And now uh, we'll look at the topic of transit first. Transit and No, no, Ravi, uh, it's like I didn't, do not had any work. I was confused from the period that we have been taking from last lecture only. So I was a bit confused about this thing. But we'll continue. We'll look at uh, the other major issue that is between these two countries, and that is water sharing. It is also a really important point, and still it persists. So the next head is water sharing. This is a cause of cooperation and conflict both. We have cooperated in some respect. These rivers are used as inland waterways. But the major thing is uh, they have created some kind of confusion between the two countries. Like we said, when Bangladesh ko nahi chahiye, to achanak aapne de diya, wahan flood ho gaya. Aur jab wo maang rahe hote hain, to kabhi kabhi hum nahi dete hain, to wahan kya hota hai? Drought ho jata hai. So they are suffering drought and floods based on the availability and supply of water that India allows from its boundary. Because most of the rivers, big rivers from India flow to that part of the world. And it is dependent on both the two important rivers. And it, Bangladesh is completely a flood plain. So I want you to draw a diagram that can help you in uh, prelims as well and mains of course these diagrams diagram banana aapko hamesa help karne wala hai so let's uh, start okay this is your bangladesh River Ganga. Yeah, Ravi, you have point, uh, pointed out correctly. And the major rivers which are cause of concern okay
Tista river. These three rivers together Okay, so you can have questions over name of these rivers. When Brahmaputra enters Bangladesh, it is called as Jamuna. Okay, this river is called as Jamuna when it enters Bangladesh. And interestingly, <coughs> this Tista river almost not exactly Tista, a small stream that starts from uh, Brahmaputra only, this is called as Brahmaputra there, a small stream in Bangladesh. And Ganga, of course, you know, the moment it enters, it is known as Padma here. Padma. When Brahmaputra joins Ganga, then also it is called as Padma only. And the Surma river, when it enters here, this is called as Meghna, and this Padma river after meeting Meghna is called as Meghna only downstreams. So you can have a question in prelims. So just try to remember these things. It will help you in uh, prelims as well. And whenever uh, you are drawing a diagram in international uh, relations, then you don't need to write all these names. Just represent Ganga, Tista, Brahmaputra, write Meghna, it will work, okay? So you need to uh, remember this. It will help you in prelims. So these are the rivers which are a cause of concern for the relationship between these two countries. Draw it. Here we have always write the names India. This is your Bangladesh. This is this part is Northeast India. So rough sketches which can help you. No, no, Tista is not Jamuna. Brahmaputra is Jamuna. I have written over it. Jamuna is, this is Jamuna. Brahmaputra is called as Jamuna. Tista is called as Tista until and unless it meets. Brahmaputra, that is Jamuna. So draw it fast. Draw it fast, we have to discuss this topic. So as many as 54 transboundary rivers are there in between these two. Theek hai? There are 50 rivers. You need to note this down. Almost 54 rivers and streams between two countries. Theka? So it can create problems. Northeast Rabi, uh, it is starts from uh, Manipur. It is starts from Manipur and of course it traverses through Meghalaya, as well, uh, sorry, Mizoram. 
It traverses through Mizoram. The Surma River it starts from Manipur. So you'll have to have a look at map. Geography may yes are chijap ko karnia. So origin is not important in international relations. Kahan se kahan jara ye important when you'll be doing this uh, geography. Make sure that you have a good look at the maps. It is very, very important. Maps are bahut sare question aate hain. So 54 rivers. And the problem with these mountainous rivers is that they shift their courses many a times. So what happens? There are always some claims that say that that land area belongs to me. So local people start fighting because some of the times river traverses and the land which was earlier belonging to Bangladesh will come in India. And some of the times the land belonging to India will go to Bangladesh. And the farmers will fight, then border security forces will fight, and it will escalate. So the biggest problem here is shifting course of the rivers create border issues. Shifting course of the rivers cause these border issues. So, yeah, Ravi, Bangladesh is lower riparian in most of the cases. Okay? So, shifting course of the rivers cause border issues. And though we always talk about the uh, sharing of the waters of Ganga and Tista, we have packs over this, but rest of the rivers have caused skirmishes. Okay. Recently in news was Feni River. You must have, a, you'll read about it, that river is not important. You'll be talking about these rivers and all in geography. We'll be focusing on how they are impacting these relationship between the two countries. So if we talk about the river dispute with Ganga, the first one is Ganga. Bangladesh blamed earlier that Parakka Baraj, Parakka Baraj is the cause of floods and droughts in Bangladesh. Like I had discussed while looking at the historical uh, events that had taken place, so for Ganga, it was disputed. It was always disputed. They said that since Farakka barrage has been formed, India doesn't give us water during the dry season. And during wet season, they open the gates and it causes floods in Bangladesh. So it was always a cause of concern. It were always a cause of concern. Okay. And Bangladesh Bangladesh complained that it is not getting fair share of water. as India is diverting the water. So 
okay this was a complaint that bangladesh had but in a series of meetings that india had with bangladesh india has assured them that they will get fair share okay so though there were many a times there were lot of talks about this river but it did not become a talking point it did not involved uh, some kind of politics because uh, the neighboring states never fought over it neither the population because there were so many rivers braided rivers braided channels that were fulfilling the requirement of those people but in northern bangladesh the area between the two rivers that is ganges and brahmaputra before they meet that is a area where tista is the only major river and tista is a major river and the water of tista is also required for states of india and it is so much uh, overused that when it reaches to bangladesh the water availability is very very less so it is a bigger concern for bangladesh if we talk about the tista river this dispute is a major dispute where the local politicians of the regions are also involved okay whenever these two countries want to uh, resolve this issue some of the states like bangladesh uh, the in a very recent event only mamta banerji started agitating protesting and she chose not to take part in the meet between sheikh hasina uh pm modi so some of this local politics is also making these things complicated okay so there was a water sharing agreement before only in 1983 there was an agreement okay agreement on water sharing of tista so this agreement what it said it said that 36% of the water will go to bangladesh 39 to india country share of water okay and rest to bay of bengal because some water has to reach the ultimate stage right but the problem is though this agreement was there it was never ever implemented in totality it was never implemented there was always some of the problems and it, it did not happen this is share of water this was not implemented okay so this was as per agreement of 1983 we are talking about this now there was one more agreement there was one more agreement that took place in 2011 
ठीक है शेयर ऑफ वाटर टू एग्रीमेंट इन फैक्ट नाइनटीन नाइनटी सिक्स एंड टू थाउजेंड इलेवन ओके एंड वॉट दे हैव डिसाइडेड दैट बांग्लादेश विल गेट फिफ्टी परसेंट इंडिया विल गेट फिफ्टी परसेंट मतलब रेस्ट जीरो परसेंट टू वे ऑफ बंगाल इट वॉज highly criticized by the environmentalists it means that both the countries were allowed to consume whole of the water whatever is flowing through tista and nothing will be reaching the ocean so it can bring a lot of changes to the environment so it was criticized but none of the agreements could be signed i hope you have uh, noted it down and it was also not agreed by government of west bengal which led to protests farakka barrage ka background kya hai farakka barrage banaya gaya tha taki india mein multi river uh, मल्टी रिवर प्रोजेक्ट्स का आप, आपने अगर सुना है फरक्का बैरेज वाज टू इंश्योर दैट देयर इज कैनाल इरिगेशन एज वेल एज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इज प्रोड्यूस्ड सो इट वाज बिल्ट सो बिकॉज ऑफ व्हेन इट वाज बिल्ट देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर सेव्ड इन द डैम्स इन मॉनसून सीजन वेन एवर द वॉटर इज लेफ्ट फ्रॉम इट इट विल डिस्ट्रॉय पार्ट ऑफ बांग्लादेश एंड इन समर्स when india require uh, requires water then it will not allow uh, water to go to bangladesh in large amount so they will have droughts so this is the story that you have to read about farakka barrage in international relations it is more than enough okay so is still this problem is like this only we do not have a solution over this the agreement was not signed the things are not clear many a times uh, the two governments have met but every time what they do they bring a commission that will decide on this thing the government diplomatic uh, talks will continue but ultimately what will happen ultimately they will not it will not give any uh the purpose of that project was as such they are not producing only because it has created a lot of environmental pollutions okay the problem is that the siltation problem and the flow of water was not uniform to produce electricity if you look at uh, it is the barrage it is a project that uh, initially had a lot of uh, water flow but at this point in time the siltation problem has made it difficult right the movement of the water is difficult it is spreads a lot and it creates flooding okay so this problem is, is still uh, existing so this is uh, like uh, you need to focus on these two rivers and like i said the problem with the feni river was in news you need to agreement was signed and things are now okay it was between tripura state so we had uh, signed an agreement over utilization we have inland issues so it is a very small river so not uh, that much important but you need to remember uh, that as well the feni river
ठीक है फेनी रिवर इज इन स्टेट ऑफ त्रिपुरा सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट त्रिपुरा दिस इज द रिवर विच हैज हेल्प इन कॉर्डियल रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द टू कंट्रीज द मोस्ट रिसेंट कॉर्डियल रिलेशन बेस्ड ऑन द रिलेशनशिप विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू रिवर इज ऑन फेनी रिवर and tripura is uh, culturally same with that part as well we have many uh, the in the plains of tripura the bengali culture is uh, mostly prevalent and it is uh, like helpful so uh, we, when we talk about this thing uh, river dispute as one diagram we had drawn the other thing like shifting courses we have talked about so always try to show this thing right whenever you are writing an answer uh, what you can do is like instead of wasting words just write the topic as shifting rivers so maybe name this plot as a and this plot as b so what you can do just show with the help of diagram so what happens plot b plot a is 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 still here so what it becomes the cause of dispute okay so here you can write india here you can write bangladesh so such representation will help you to save words it is very important technique while writing answers you can use such aspects okay always involve such this what it is showing figure shifting course of river causing dispute so this guy who owns b he lost part of land to the river and rest part went to this bangladesh so they'll fight amongst themselves other season what will happen it will again be like this only so it uh, causes some of the skirmishes like we had all the not all the rivers are cause of concern but at least 20 rivers are there which cause such kind of small skirmishes but the Uh, borders the security forces on the border take care of such issues we have developed a uh, mechanism so that they can take care of such things so i hope uh, this thing is clear using diagrams is clear to all of you and with the discussion we had uh, on relevance of uh, north uh, bangladesh with respect to northeast i'm pretty sure that some of you will try to write that answer because we had seen the framework so uh, in next lecture we'll be looking at some of other aspects which are important with respect to this relationship so uh, have your meal and uh, take after taking rest study and try to attempt that question it will help you slowly if you'll start from now only then only you can learn this art because today only you have learnt a lot many things if you tr you'll try to write the answer then you'll not lose words yeah ravi uh, do practice about this thing writing is really really important so uh, take some rest have your lunch and take good care of health as well so we'll be continuing with the rest of the part tomorrow have a great time then Take care. Thank you, everyone, for bearing with this lecture, and I hope each one of you will do better with rest of the lectures. Stay blessed, everyone.